Once upon a time, a star fell to Earth, into the real world. It fell in the shape of an open-hearted girl called Esther. Some said she was too open-hearted. She had a hole in her heart where a war should have been. But this hole was a space for love to come in and move through her. It whispered to her in the night. It took her into another world, one that lives alongside the real world, but that many do not choose to see. In the real world, Esther could not dance her story freely. But in this other world, love danced with her all the time, her light shimmering through space, and her story dancing through eternity. When her beloved grandparents died, love took her by the hand and showed her they hadn't really left. They were still there, dancing their love story in the air around her, no more than a thought away. When she went into hospital, love held her through the pain and rocked her gently as her mind danced into that other realm where, through stories, she could be and experience whatever she desired. In the real world, those who loved her closed the hole and built the wall they felt was meant to be there. Now Esther could dance in the real world, but love found it harder to visit. She began to doubt if love had ever been with her at all, or if the other world even existed. She became scared and clung to the real world with all she had. This gave strength to the wall and it started to grow. Gradually, it spread across her heart, making her impenetrable, strong and armoured. She stamped determinedly through the real world and made her mark. Then, one day, a bright new baby star came to Earth, through her. It arrived with love and Esther could see how brilliantly she shone. Love held up a mirror so she could see the two of them together. Esther was stunned. This new star was blindingly bright. But Esther's light only flickered. She barely glimmered. Esther was hurt and angry. She broke the mirror and watched the shards of light fly away. She shuffled over to a corner to hide and cried. So great was her shame and rage. The new star called out to her, but Esther could not bear to be near her. But love had given her the star to look after. And as she cried, love moved through the tears and began to find the tiny gaps in the wall around Esther's heart. The wall started to shake and larger gaps began to appear. Esther's light grew to a glow. She turned to love and asked how she could glow more brightly so she could light the way for this new star. Love asked her to dance back into her story. Through the years of stamping, Esther had forgotten how to dance and she felt frustrated that it no longer came so naturally. But love was patient. Love gave her lessons. At first, Esther had her feet on top of love's, like a child at a wedding, concentrating hard and not looking around. But as they practiced, she began to grow in confidence. Some of what she had known instinctively as a child returned to her and she began to trust love more. Love stretched her and asked her to dance more complex steps so she could see how brilliantly she could shine. Esther doubted at first, but she worked hard to become the best dancer she could be every day. The new star joined them too, twirling and dancing with love, who seemed to be able to partner both them perfectly at the same time. As Esther grew in confidence and love, she opened her awareness to the place love was taking her, and she saw that long-forgotten realm once more. She recognised those she had loved and lost, twinkling in the darkness, dancing their eternal stories through the stratosphere. She realised that the world was full of this light. 
that was all around her, even when she wasn't looking. Looking more closely, she could see that not only was she dancing with love, but that love was part of her, part of everyone and everything. There was no separation between the real world and the magical realm, except the one she had learnt. The whole cosmos glowed with the same joy that lit her up. All of it was dancing in tune to the music of the universe. Then, one day, in the real world, she saw a man, a soldier, who was struggling with heavy armour that was weighing him down. He was shuffling, cowed, hardly able to see where he was going. She stopped and offered him her hand, gently inviting him to dance. He took it, and they started to sway. He began to cry, and she did too. Again, love flowed through the tears into his heart, and the armour fell away. As it did so, she watched as he began to hear the music that had always been playing, took love's hand, and danced into his story. This is my story. It is also the story of many of us. As children, we understand the power of play, the open joy of curiosity, the wonder of creation. But we are told this is not the way to grow up. We are told this is not sensible. We will not be able to support ourselves. We will not be able to make a living. We must turn our backs on what we love. But in doing so, we turn our backs on love itself. Love moves through me as creativity. It is the same energy that is creating the universe and everything in it. In it. it is alive. It is powerful. It is real. As a child, I was completely in tune with it. I wrote, I performed, I read stories and traveled to another realm where, which I could see more vibrant than the world that I could discern with my senses. I had a strong and unquestioning relationship with it, trusting it would be there for me for whatever I wanted, whenever I called. But as I grew up, I started to listen to those who tro told me that such endeavours were child's play, that there was a time to put away such childish things, grow up and join the real world. I tried. At first, I worked on becoming a lawyer, someone who would take a stand, manoeuvre others through the intricacies of the rules, speak for those with less knowledge than me. Then. I joined the world of business and gained a suit, a status, a title. Along the way, though, I lost sight of all that was good, powerful, and valuable for me. My heart dulled. My life lost colour. I shuffled through my days, looking straight ahead, refusing to veer from this prescribed path. Then, one day, my daughter was born. Alone with her in the first few days of her life, I came face to face with the woman I had become. I was not the mother I had wanted to be. I was filled with shame and an all-consuming rage that terrified me. You see, my creativity hadn't left me. I had simply suppressed it, and that has consequences. As Brené Brown says, unused creativity is not benign. It metastasizes. It turns into grief, rage, judgment, sorrow, shame. That is where I found myself, alone and ashamed and cut off from my creativity. The energy that was intended for my growth had instead been confined and now unleashed itself in an all-consuming rage. I had lost faith in myself. I no longer trusted what I might do to the child I adored, and the power of my shame was overwhelming. 
What was clear to me was that I could not continue to live as I had been. My choices were destroying me, and now they threatened to destroy everything I held dear. Something had to change, and what needed to change most was me. I could no longer ignore creativity's call. It was time for a step into faith. It was time to grow up and get creative. Einstein has described creativity as intelligence having fun, which it is, but it's more than that. To me, creativity is the energy that has us looking out into the world and asking what we can do better for whatever we love. As humans, we are all creative beings. Neuroscientists have shown that we each create our own version of the world, like a personal Minecraft. We all create an impression, meals, families, relationships, and we all weave the stories of our lives. It is our choice whether that story is one of the hapless victim of circumstance or of the hero. Our willingness to embrace our creativity is the deciding factor. Far from being child's play, creativity is the path to maturity, to wisdom, and to growth. If we are to grow ourselves and as a species, it is time to grow up and get creative. Working in partnership with creativity into a mature relationship and becoming the creative heroes we are meant to be. Creativity is not just about art, music, and drama. It is also about science, discovery, solving complex technical problems, becoming a better athlete, deepening relationships, and finding solutions to all the challenges we encounter. It is also the way in which we are going to be able to balance our desire to live well with the need to take care of the resources that we have. And it makes sound business sense. Innovation, the product of creativity, is valuable. Money is one of our measures of value, so for those who think that creativity doesn't pay, I'm going to unleash my creative accountant and put some numbers on it. A 2013 UN report on the creative economy showed that the world trade of creative goods and services totaled 624 billion US dollars in 2011. That's greater than the combined revenue of Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. Outside of the purely financial, the report goes on to say that while creating jobs, the creative economy also contributes to the well-being of communities, individual self-esteem, and quality of life thus achieving inclusive and sustainable growth. And it's not just in the creative industries that creativity pays. A 2014 Forrester Consulting report on the creative dividend showed that companies that embrace creativity outperform their peers and competitors in key business performance indicators, such as revenue growth, market share, and talent acquisition. A 2018 McKinsey Quarterly on the McKinsey Design Index showed that companies with the greatest financial returns combine design and business leadership in a bold design-centric vision. In our age of technological disruption, we are called upon to be innovative. To be innovative, we need to do things differently. And to do things differently, we need to move in step with creativity. It is time to grow up and get creative. But how? In my own journey of growing up and getting creative, I returned to my childhood passions and grew my faith and capabilities step by step until eventually making my entire life about following creativity where it leads. I developed a structure, a process, a practice I can have faith in as I go into the unknown. It is a practice of the creative hero. And it is a practice you already know. It is the bedrock of every story you have heard since you were a tiny child. It is the hero's journey. 
Joseph Campbell wrote of the hero's journey, the map of mythology that is also the map of how we learn and grow as humans. We receive a call to action. We go into the unknown to face challenges, both internal and external. With help and guidance from others and through our own personal growth, we overcome those challenges. We return to where we came from to tell our story. In doing so, we not only share our discoveries, we also inspire others to search for theirs. We then rece receive a new call to action and go on and repeat our hero's journey, growing a little with every new mission. This is a creative hero's practice. Creativity works with us and invites us to take a new approach to what has been done before, based on our passions and capabilities. This requires a willingness to take risks, to step into the unknown, to not know, to have a child's curiosity, to fail and fumble, learning as we go, becoming a little more adept today than we were yesterday. It asks nothing less of us than all that we are and all we have, all of our resilience and resources. It also requires discipline, not the imposed shoulds of the real world, but the discipleship that comes from giving our lives over to love and taking action from there. It is not easy, but it is intensely rewarding. In exchange for our humility, creativity will dance with us to the end of time. Creativity will help us hear the music of the universe, the pulse of the stars themselves. We will recognize that we are not separate, a star on our own, but part of all of it. This is how we grow up and get creative. Every one of us has a unique perspective, a unique capability to address a particular darkness in our world and shine light into the shadows. We are not meant to give up on creativity as we grow. We are meant to grow into it. What we delighted in as children is intended as a sign of where our adult attention is to go, where we are to find our purpose. We are meant to follow love, not turn away from it. And we can start from where we are, and we can start small. The problem we set out to solve at first doesn't have to be huge. It can be something mundane, like designing a meal plan that satisfies a family, or working out how to open that tricky jam jar. Wear a rubber glove, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> or it could be that we're called on for something broader, such as raising awareness for climate change, or developing AI medical technology. Our call is as unique as we are but we all have a call to action to move into a mature relationship with creativity and become the creative heroes we are meant to be. Instead of giving up or treating creativity as child's play, we are instead invited to look out into our world with love, ask creativity how we can ser serve our moment and then step with it into the unknown to find our purpose. Are you ready to grow up and get creative.